guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars. I'm Dan, and this is the Schecter Stealth 5 Bass. Let me tell you guys a real quick story about a Schecter bass that I used to own. When I was in college, I had just started making my living as a bass player, and I was playing on a Yamaha bass, and one day I went to go plug it in to rehearse, and nothing. It was just completely dead. Now, not knowing what I know now about bass and guitar building and modding, I probably could have fixed it, but I didn't know, and I was panicking because I just started making my living as a bass player, so I did what any college musician would do, and I called up mom and dad and said, hey, mom and dad, my 21st birthday is coming up, and I need a bass. Bad. And so they came to the rescue, and they gave me a budget that I could spend for buying myself a base for all my gigs that I had lined up. So I went out shopping. I probably went to every single music store in the Orange County, LA area looking for the base that just fit me and my style at the time. And I kept coming back to a Schecter Studio 5. Even though it was way under the budget that my parents had given me, that was the one that I wanted. So I ended up picking that one up for like $600, I believe, at Guitar Center. But I absolutely love that bass. I gigged the heck out of that bass. I put myself through college playing that bass. And then fast forward about five, six, seven years, I don't know, uh, I was no longer making my living as a bass player. I had taken a job in stage production and I had accumulated a lot more basses. And I was starting to play more guitar at church, actually. And so I listed my Schecter Studio five for sale or trade for a guitar amp. By that time I was living in Arizona and I had found somebody that was willing to make a trade for my Studio 5 for their Fender Hot Rod Deluxe guitar amp and I thought that was a fair trade so I drove down to Anthem Arizona and I traded him and it actually turned out to be really good because I needed a guitar amp to serve at my church and he needed a bass to serve at his church so felt really good about the trade. On my way driving back home I started to think, man, I made a huge mistake. What was I thinking trading away that bass? It was such a good bass, it was so good to me. Man, I have missed that bass ever since. So when Schechter reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in reviewing any of their gear, my first thought was, this is my chance to get my Studio 5 One, back. So I was browsing their website and I saw that the Studio 5 goes for like $1,000 now and that doesn't really line up with my value proposition of spend less, play more. And I came across this beautiful bass right here, the Stealth 5. This thing comes in at less than $500 and it's got all the features that I want to see in a bass, okay? It's got a P and a Music Man setup. They're active Diamond Series pickups with an active preamp. The Music Man pickup when solo sounds like a Music Man pickup. The P pickup soloed sounds like an active P bass. It doesn't sound like a traditional P bass, but it does sound like an active P bass. Tech Tusk XL Nut. 
a six bolt neck construction and a very smooth fast plane matte finish and not to mention this thing just looks absolutely sexy now these diamond series pickups i'm pretty sure they're just rebranded emgs which are what came in the studio 5 that i had i could be wrong about that don't quote me on it but that's what they sound like to me and then both pickups together give you that awesome p and music band tone tones out of this thing not to mention the onboard preamp for boosting the bass and treble i did find that the preamp is a little bit weak if you push it too hard it does start distorting so that's kind of a bummer that's something that i will probably upgrade down the road but i like the pickups enough to keep them now for the samples that are recorded i just recorded directly into logic pro using my focus right scarlet usb interface and of course a speak friends instrument cable you guys know that I love these SpeakFriend instrument cables because they are made out of the same components that Mogami cables are made out of, and they come with the same unconditional lifetime warranty that Mogami comes with for half the price. Now, instrument cables, if you gig them a lot, but there's something that inevitably just go bad, okay? I don't know how many Mogami cables I've been through, and the reason why I used to use Mogami, aside from the awesome tone that I got from them, is because I could just walk into Guitar Center and swap them out right on the spot when they died. Unfortunately, Mogami cables are just extremely expensive, so if you can't afford them, pick up one of these Speak Friend cables because, like I said, they are made out of the same components as Mogami. They have the same unconditional lifetime warranty as Mogami. You can't swap them out at Guitar Center, so you'll have to follow the link down in the description to the Speak Friends Facebook page where they will take care of you if you ever have an issue with their cables. So also put a link down in the description where you could purchase these cables on Amazon. Back to the review. I am just always so blown away that Schecter can make such high quality instruments for less than $500. I mean, this thing just looks awesome, it sounds awesome, it plays awesome, all for a price that you can actually afford, okay? Now, I will warn you, just like the Studio 5, once they realized how good it was, they jacked up the price. So get these while they're cheap. And Mr. Guy in Anthem, Arizona, if you're watching this, I want my Studio 5 back. But I don't have your Pot Rod Deluxe anymore, because I traded it away.